Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. We have got our second Corocktober video for this month of October. This video is in collaboration with Jenica over at Dishing the Lights. Y'all, I have recently found her channel. Absolutely love it. She is a newer YouTuber and her content, her foodie content, all her content is amazing. So please, please, please go over, give her some love. I will have her channel and her video linked in the description box below. I'm telling you, you are really going to enjoy her channel. I absolutely love it. She shares the most relatable and like the relatable prepper stuff. She's like bomb at doing the whole prepper pantry and shelf stable meals. She also does what's for dinners. She's been canning and she just shares amazing recipes. So I know you're truly going to enjoy her channel. So please go over, give her some love, comment on her video and let her know that I sent you. And let's go ahead and get into these delicious crock pot recipes. I'm going to make some French onion gravy mushroomy pork chops. <laughs> I have got one can of beefy mushroom and one can of French onion. And then I've got some pork chops here. I have started seasoning them with some, of course, the Kinder's red garlic and the um, garlic pepper John Henry's. Y'all know these are our perfect seasoning match here. I'm clearly, I need more Kinder's. We are getting low on Kinder's, so I'm going to have to pick some of that up. But I'm seasoning both sides really well with that. And then I'm going to put them in here. And then we're just going to dump both cans in and let it cook up. And then I'm going to make some crock pot mashed potatoes to go with it. And I think it's going to be yummy. It sounds really good. I tried to look up recipes on Pinterest for like French onion pork chops. None of them looked good. <laughs> so I'm just going to roll with my own ideas. So we'll see. I'm going to add a little bit of each can just at the bottom so I know that pork chops don't burn. I'm just going to add a little bit. So there's some sort of a liquid at the bottom. And I'm just going to add on my add in the seasoned pork chops. And these are pretty thin, so I don't think they're going to take that long to cook. But I do want them to be, I'm going to do them slow because I want it to be nice and tender. So, probably going to do low for about six hours. And hopefully they'll be like fall apart tender. I just about to finish off my kinders, y'all. Almost got them all in a single layer. I've got one more chop. Okay. So now I'm just going to add the rest of each can. So I, like I said, I have a can of the beefy mushroom and a can of the French onion. And I feel like you could also add in like a can of, or you could add in some fresh onion, like chopped sliced onion. Like I do the French onion burgers, if you all seen that one. You could do that and you could even add in more mushrooms depending on if you liked mushrooms. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it as is. I don't have any mushrooms and I don't feel like cutting up an onion. So we're gonna keep it super basic and have it like this. So I'm gonna cook this on low for about six hours. have about six I think I don't even remember how many I peeled 
peeled and washed and diced up in here. But of course you'll just use however many, you know, you know your family is going to eat, however big or small your family is. And then you're just gonna take and fill, cover the potatoes up with water. Just wanna make sure that they're covered. This is my favorite crock pot side dish. I'm not even playing. Now I keep chicken powder on hand, so I always just use the powder or the cubes. But if you have regular chicken broth or chicken stock, use it instead of water. But I always just keep the powder on hand. And then we're gonna go in with some garlic powder, some onion powder, some pepper, and some salt. Seasoning them up while they're cooking is a great way to add flavor. And it's gonna make for some yummy mashed potatoes. Now we're just gonna let these cook on high for about four hours. Okay y'all, the house smells so good. Here is what the pork chops look like. They are fully cooked. They're kind of breaking apart. So they're nice and tender. So. I want this to be kind of a thick gravy, so I'm gonna add in a little cornstarch slurry and try to get this to thicken up. And then we are going to make our mashed potatoes. I have drained the liquid off of the potatoes. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of this evaporated milk. You can use regular milk, evaporated milk, whatever you want. I'm getting low on regular milk, so I'm just gonna use this evaporated milk. Add a little bit in there. And then I'm gonna go in with some butter. I'm gonna put the lid on it and kind of let it heat up a little bit. It's way better to mix together your mashed potatoes in warm liquid. So we're going to give it a second. It's on warm. Give it a few minutes just to kind of warm through and then we will put the potatoes in there and mix them up. Okay, so I got my milk in there, my butter. I'm going to add my potatoes back in and we're just going to mash them up. Sometimes I use the electric mixer but you have to be careful because one, the hot liquid will come up on you and two, you could possibly crack your crock pot. So just be careful. But I'm just gonna mix these up and then um, I'm gonna taste it before I add any seasonings because you cooked it for a good four hours with salt, pepper, garlic, and all that. So give it a taste first and then alter and see what you need. So that's it y'all, it's so easy to make crock pot mashed potatoes and they're so good. And when you let the liquid heat up like that before you mash them, it keeps everything really smooth, and so you have really nice, smooth mashed potatoes. And this goes for even if you do them on the stovetop. If you drain them and then put the, that liquid in your hot pan and let it sit on your stove for a second, and just kind of let it heat through. Then look, you get nice, smooth, creamy mashed potatoes. Okay, I added in a little bit of salt, a little bit more pepper. They're good to go, I tasted them. So I'm gonna make me a little well. Get a couple more tablespoons of butter in here. And then put the lid on them, keep them on warm until you're ready to serve. This was super delicious and we will definitely be making this again. Next time I will add a little bit more cornstarch slurry. It wasn't as thick as I hoped, but the flavor was really good. And Luke said that I should definitely cut up an onion and add in some mushrooms for next time. Okay, 
Okay, awesome. For this next recipe, I'm going to make some crock pot potato soup. Now, I'm the only one that likes potato soup. So, I'm actually here by myself today. So, I'm going to try my best to make a small batch of potato soup. I don't normally follow a recipe. I just do it. So we're going to do this together. If it, if you're interested in a recipe, let me know. If I make it again, I'll try to do better at measuring and all that. But this is just one of those recipes that I just throw together. And it's potato-y and cheesy and delicious. So I've got four potatoes here. I like to keep the skins on but you can peel them if you don't like the skins. But for potato soup, I don't know why, I just like to have the skins. So I'm cutting them into decent sized chunks. And then we're gonna add them into our slow cooker. It's kind of like doing my crock pot mashed potatoes, but I'm leaving the skins on. So, but I'm gonna go in with some water or chicken broth. If you have chicken broth, use chicken broth, but y'all know I always like to use the powder. Okay, so I've got four cups water, four cups of water total. So I'm going to equal that out to chicken broth. And I'm going to go ahead and season this up because it's going to be slow cooking. You want to add in all that flavor while it's cooking up. Some pepper. Salt. Garlic powder. Onion powder. Some paprika. just do all of these to taste but you want to definitely give your potatoes some good flavor so I'm gonna put the lid on and cook this on high for about three hours you want the potatoes to be fork tender but you don't want them to be mushy enough where it could be mashed potatoes you want them to you still want them to have a little bit of bite not just completely fall apart now that the potatoes are all cooked up I'm gonna take and smash just a couple times just to break some of those up. But for the most part, I like a chunky potato soup. <laughs> but if you like yours not as chunky, then you can definitely mash it up a little more. I'm gonna add in four ounces of cream cheese and about a half a cup of milk. You can use regular milk, but I'm using up that evaporated milk because I had it in the fridge and I needed to use it. And then I added in some kielbasa. You can add in regular ham, you can add in kielbasa, smoked sausage, you can add in bacon, whatever protein you want, or if you don't want a protein, then don't add in a protein. I'm gonna put the lid on it and let it sit for about 30 minutes. You wanna let that cream cheese melt. And then after that 30 minutes is up, I'm gonna add in some cheese. Add about a cup of, well, a cup total between Monterey Jack and some Colby Jack, but you can add whatever cheese you want. I just used what I had on hand in the fridge that I needed to use up. And then I'm going to give it a stir and then put the lid back on it and let that sit for about 15 so minutes. You just want to make sure that your cheese is melted and then we will get it thickened up. So I did give it a taste and I thought it needed a little bit more seasoning. So I'm just going in with the same seasonings that we started out with. And then I'm going to give that a stir 
And then the best way to thicken up your potato soup is with instant potatoes. I'm going to use one I had in the prepper pantry and it's just the four cheese, but you can use whatever you have on hand or whatever you want to pick up at the store. But you're just going to add in a little at a time, stir it up, and it's just going to slowly thicken depending on how many flake, you know, potato flakes you add in. Um, I just kind of added a little bit as I went, as you've seen kept stirring it and I like mine nice and thick and creamy and so I added in a little bit extra and y'all it is so good put the lid on it and just kind of let it finish thickening up and it is perfect so good absolutely love potato soup I hate that my family doesn't like it but it all worked out because I got to make a little batch of it and eat it all for myself Good morning. We're going to get dinner going in the crock pot. We're going to do some Italian beef subs today. So I've got about a little over three pounds here of a chuck roast. I prefer chuck roast. It's just a better quality, better cut. of dry Italian. Just gonna sprinkle that whole thing on top of here. And then I take and do half of a jar of mild banana peppers, but if you like more banana peppers, then you can do more. Just depends on what you like and I'll have this recipe linked down below for you guys it's so easy to put together and it makes for a delicious dinner and then you're gonna need about a half a cup of the juice the banana pepper juice I'm just gonna put it around it And then you're going to take and add water about halfway up. That's it. Super easy. We're going to plug it in and let it cook for a good... Put on the things in it. Okay, plug it in. We're gonna cook it on low for a good eight to 10 hours. You wanna make sure to have enough time. You want the roast to fall apart. If your roast is not falling apart, then it's not done yet. It needs a few more hours. So give it enough time where it will be fall apart tender. That's definitely how you want it. Here it is after about eight hours. It was nice and shreddable. It just fell right apart. And we serve it on a hoagie bun with some provolone cheese. And I ended up just cooking up some tater tots to go with it. This is one of our favorite crock pot recipes. And that is it, y'all. I really hope you enjoyed this crock pot video. I hope it gave you some inspiration. I hope you found something that you think your family will enjoy. Don't forget that this video was in collaboration with Jenica over at Dishing Delights. I'll have all her information listed in the description box below, so please make sure you go over and give her some love. I absolutely love her channel. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye, guys.